May profits be upon you. Let's give an update on Aussie USD, Aussie Japanese yen, New Zealand dollar USD, and New Zealand dollar yen. Okay, let's start with the Aussie USD. We were here. And what I was saying was, I'd like to see a raid of the liquidity up top here. All we had, all I had was a green arrow going up. And I was looking at this area and this area. And uh, I was saying that uh, I'm looking for price to either turn around here or turn around here because price was bearish. The high time frame uh, price is showing bearishness. And I would look to see a pullback from this higher time frame uh, uh, demand zone. And once we came to contact with that, I was looking for price to turn around you know, make a, a lower high and then continue with a lower low breaking this low and continuing the bearish uh, trend. Now, what happened? Price did come into contact with this POI here, this uh, supply, all right? But I was looking for chalk, a change of character. I was looking for price to change, to, to show the shift from bearish momentum to bullish momentum. And this would signal it for me, right? Price did come up and break that low, uh, the, the swing high here. And uh, it's not really a swing, it's just, you know, the, uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the in, uh, intermediary high, all right? An intermediary high, a micro, microstructure, okay? And it broke this, this point of microstructure there, which signaled to me that price is uh, wanting to go a little higher. And uh, it didn't uh, give signs here that it wanted to continue, you know, turn around and go come lower. It just was very bullish. So then you look to the, uh, the next point of uh, interest and that's where price decided to turn around, round over and then uh, come on down. And I suspect that price will continue down from here, okay? So this one played out pretty doggone well according to the, uh, the analysis. Let me see, on 15, we can see this action a little clearer. I want you to see what I see, all right? Price did come down, give us this double bottom, taking the liquidity below this low, right? Dip below that, came back up, gave us a break of structure here, because this is a good pullback, uh, gives that break of structure, which indicates that price wants to turn around and go higher. What do we expect after a break of structure? A return to impulse, a return to the origin. And price returned perfectly and off to the races is that green arrow, all right? Taking the liquidity here, turning this into an X, bam, and off to the races, all right? So this one played out pretty well. Yeah, it broke It broke this order block and went to the second one. And we, were, we stay ready, we stay reactive, all right? And uh, we, were, we say, if this, then that, if it breaks through this, then we're gonna look for the short here. And uh, if you took that short here, you're looking good right now. Looking pretty good. Let's move on. Aussie yen. Let's go to the four hour where we did our analysis. Now, what did I say? I said price is hitting this four hour demand zone. Looks like uh, I'm looking for a uh, price to turn around here. And uh, hold on one second. See something here. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, what I we were just with this candle on Saturday, and I said uh, what I need to see is price give me uh, a change of character here to to let me know that it wants to go higher. So we go down to the 15 so that we can see the price action a little clearer, right? And we see exactly what happened. Price chopped down into this higher time frame 
uh, a demand zone, broke structure up to the top here, give us a break of structure. And what do I look for after a break of structure? Well, actually, this isn't a break of structure. This is actually just chalk. I got this mislabeled, I'm sorry. All right, yeah, change of character. Uh, price gave us that change of character, gave us a pullback. It wasn't to, down to the origin, but it was a pullback. And it, and it just indicates that price wants to go higher. And I would have been looking for a break of structure either, you know, over here, here, you know, that, that would have done, that would have done just great, but we didn't get that pullback. We never got the pullback, right? That doesn't mean that pullback won't come later. You gotta keep that in mind, all right? But what was I saying about the, uh, P, these POIs up here? I said that uh, prices likely to go up higher and uh, uh, turn around, we're gonna look for price to do exactly what it did with uh, Aussie USD, either in this POI or this POI, this uh, supply, this supply. We're gonna look at this one first. And price didn't give us any change of character signs or anything like that. It just plowed on through it, boom. So of course our eyes go to the next one where we see a break of the structure, you see a a, a, a swing low made, swing high, and then a breaking of that low. And that's all we, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. What do you look for after a break of structure? This, this stuff is very easy, folks. Look, after a break of structure, you expect a return to impulse. Price pulled back. We can see the, uh, these, uh, uh, a buy to sell wick here, all right? It's in this leg of structure, like I've illustrated in the previous videos, all right? And uh, this is where you, this is, would have been the place to take your short. You had another chance to take a short here, all right? But uh, the, this, was, this was your area, boom, right in here. Yeah, uh, boom, supply. Okay, so and and what I said was, I remember saying that either we would see that turn around here or here. I did one of these numbers with this, if you remember. And unfortunately, it turned there. If you were ready for it, you were good to go. All right, uh, the analysis played out pretty well there. Let's go to the next one, New Zealand dollar USD. And what did we say here? Let's go to four hour. Oh yeah. We hit a high time frame POI. And uh, so here we are at NZD USD. And what am I looking for? Uh, what did I uh, mention that I was looking for in the, in the video? I said, because uh, we were here and we've uh, prices. Uh, you know, landed into this uh, this demand zone here, and I was open. You know, my mind was flexible and open to to think that you know price could continue on down. However, what would we, what would I look for at a point of interest? I look for a shift. I look for a shift from bearish to bullish momentum, right? And this is where I would be looking for it, and. Uh, uh, I would go down to the lower time frames in order to do so. Remember, I went to the one hour and I said, okay, oh, we made this low. We had, it looks like we had a break of structure here. I mean, a, um, a, a change of character here, but price, it, that change of character didn't hold. We made a lower low, right? Made this lower low. So remember that high. All right, that, that swing high. Price broke this low, took the liquidity, and we made our way up, breaking this uh, the structure to the upside. Now, before we got there, 
But what was I talking about before in the last video? I talked about this bullish and gopher and how price was testing this base candle. And what happened in the last video when I mentioned, you know, price when it when it forms these bullish and gopher patterns, what does it do? It likes to test the base candle and then do its thing. Well, this one did exactly that, and here we go. All right, and uh, we broke structure to the upside. What does that mean to you? Is there a chance that price comes down and tests the originating order blocks? I'd be looking at both of these. This one first, this one first. And if it comes down deep enough, it'll test, the, we'll look for this one. Yeah. But I'm gonna look for, I'm not gonna set a pending. I'm gonna look for that change of character so I can get confirmation once it comes back down here. Yeah. I'm looking for price to do this. If it doesn't do that, I'll look for it. I'll look for it on the, the lower one, the originating order block here. Hold on, hold on. All right, I'm gonna look here, but this one will come after I look at this one. Now, the reason I like this one better, there's only one reason. <laughs> what did I say last time when I said that? I said, uh, if you watched the last video, and of course I'll leave a link for it at the end of this video. Uh, I said, the reason why I like this is because there was inefficient price movement here. There's imbalance here. Price likes to fill that, those imbalances. So I'm looking for price to come on down and fill this imbalance, right? and quite possibly turn around here. Quite possibly. We'll see, because this is one of those weeks where there's a lot of news for New Zealand and Aussie and the rest of them, and, and, and to include USD. And, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm staying flexible. We, we're not taking any trades without confirmation. You gotta stay flexible. You can't stay, be married to a bias. And either way, getting off the subject, uh, if we go down to the 15, we can see how price, oh my goodness. All right, we can see how price, uh, what the price action was here, how it turned around, all right? Just, we just got to note how price moved low, Swing high, swing, uh, so, uh, you know, pull back rather. All right. Another dip below, breaking that one. Pull back. This one's important. Why? Because this one broke this low. All right. We broke that low here. And then we broke this high. That gives us a change of character. Are you with me? That's the first sign that price may be breaking structure or turning from bearish to bullish and may break structure to the upside. Chalk is not the same thing as a break of structure. This is a confirmation that price wants to go higher. This is the first signal, the first indicator that price may want to turn around. And what, it, what happens after this? Price goes up, swing back, swing back. Price goes back up and then returns to the impulsing order block, to the uh, origin and takes off. <laughs> Precisely as expected. Very, very good. I hope you benefited from that analysis. Now, be prepared for what it does from here. We made this high break structure to the downside. We took this liquidity from this low point here. We pulled back up to the origin. And then we're doing the sideways movement here. Are we coming back down? I'm expecting it. If we continue up from here, 
you know, I'll be ready, you know, but I'm expecting price to come back in contact with these POIs. We might come all the way down to the, to the bottom one and we might ran, run through. Just be prepared. Look at, get, just go with what price shows you and react to it. All right, let's go to the last one, NZD, JPY. All right, now this one, this one was a little different. All right, it didn't come out according to, you know, to, to what what my what bias I I left left you on. What I had, what had happened was <laughs> price was coming down coming down, and I marked the order block here, and I said here that some would consider price already in the higher time frame uh, demand zone. All right. We went over here to the left to take a look. And what I was citing was this big wick. I said, some people would consider that demand, all right? Most of the time I do, but I was looking at where price had, uh, you know, jumped off from, all right? And I did that incorrectly. I did that erroneously. All right, I really should have been paying more attention to this, uh, the demand here, because this is where the buying started. All right, the buying actually started here, right? But we had a pullback, and then we see that impulse, you know, start from here. Now, you know, this is arguable. Some people will say this is where the buying started, and 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 started up and everything but you know that's you know I, I i should have paid more attention to this and uh and i'll let you know you know when i'm wrong i'm wrong and i was wrong because you see this blue line this is where price made that bounce over there to the right i was just marking it to to show that uh uh why did price pivot there it's because of this demand zone not this we never even came into contact with this so I should have been paying more attention to this. All right, if we stretch that over to the left, we can see price did go pretty deep in here. All right, and uh, from there, it jumped up. All right, and, and I should, you know, it did the same thing with Aussie, uh, the Aussie dollar, the Aussie yen, the New Zealand dollar. Why would I think it's, it would do something different? I said price will uh, likely continue down, but I should have talked about this reaction here. That reaction is substantial on the lower time frames. If we go down to the 15, we can see, oh man, we can see how substantial it was. This is a V-shaped recovery. When you get a V-shape like this, it's a very bullish uh, pattern and uh, it jumped. It jumped very nicely. And uh, I should have accounted for that. All right, that is a, a jump of 78 pips. You know, that's, not, that's no joke. That's no joke at all. But what I was looking for here on the 15 was a change of character. I didn't see it until it broke this, this, this high point. Did you see price came down low, pulled back, and then came down lower. And this is the time uh, where it we, we see the uh, change of character here, right? The pullback was not as substantial, turned into a big old doji here. And I was hoping it would come down here and that would give me some kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a semi confirmation that uh, price wanted to continue higher but it went higher regardless. You know, it did give chalk. It did go high. There was a pullback. But uh, for me, I didn't, I didn't uh, have a whole lot of confidence in it because I didn't account for the, the demand where price turned around at. So, you know, that, that's on me. Stain on me. All right. Price did go higher. And like I said earlier, I believe that uh, the bearish market will continue to be bearish. Uh, and 
come on down. So this is just a reaction, really, but it's a substantial one that, you know, the, there was longs to take there. There would have been a counter trend, counter to the overall trend. But, uh, you know, I, you know I, I think it's only fair that I, I pointed out, you know, uh, if a uh, price does decide to come back and that's what it's doing here, if we go to the five hour, we'll see, that's wrong. If we go to the five hour, we'll see uh, let's see the six hour. Yeah, you see how this is turning, turns into a, a bullish engulfer, all right? It's coming back to test the uh, base candle, all right? Could we see, could we see price te test that base candle and start to move bullishly from here? We could, I'm gonna be ready for it. I'm gonna be ready for it. Either way, if it wants to continue down, you know, and break, oh, come on, man. <laughs> and break this low, I'm gonna be ready for that. If it breaks that low, you know, it, it, we're just confirming that it, it's gonna remain bearish, with the bearish momentum, right? But uh, the higher time frames all show bearishness, all right? We, did have a break of structure here. So I would, I would not be surprised of a pullback to one of these order blocks or even this one, because this one does not have this one. Hey, gee, really? <laughs> it has a, a lot of inefficient price movement, a lot of in balance to fill. So price does doesn't take a, a a wild turn here. You know, I would not be surprised at all because this is where I would take a short. I think the uh, a short from here would be high probability because of the the inefficiency that leads up to this this order block. The imbalance rather. Okay. So that's just something to look out for the future. But uh, we want to see after this low is made, uh, price turns around here, I would need to see a break of this high. I would need to see a break of this high to be convinced uh, uh, that price wants to go higher here. On the lower time frame, uh, like we saw in the 15, it has showed, it's, it has already showed uh, chalk change of character, all right? And we have a break of structure. Now I need uh, uh, a return to impulse. If that impulse, if that return to impulse happens, then uh, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what, you know, things might get pretty interesting. Things might get pretty interesting if we come here and uh, break the tops. I'm, I'm looking at the fact that we took out these highs here. And we'll start acting up now. Oh, All right. I'm, you know, I'm cognizant of this, the, the breaking of those uh, double highs, these are uh, uh, relative equal highs here. We took out those that liquidity. We're coming back. I would not be surprised at all if price turns back around. So that's where we are. That's where we are. Uh, you know, if I if I'm if I'm honest, if I'm honest, I believe that price is going to continue through this. We might get a reaction here, a pull up, maybe to take these highs out for liquidity, and then continuation to the down, with the downtrend. We got a lower lows and lower highs, all right? This could be uh, uh, the, uh, uh, a lower high being established for uh, a lower low to be, to follow. So I mean, we gotta be careful. We, get, we just gotta be careful and we're just gonna react. Let's see how price acts 
once it gets here. Okay, I hope you benefited from this analysis. Uh, most of the analysis was uh, on point. This last one, not as much. Uh, and that's on me. Uh, but I'll do better the next time, I swear. I swear I will. I'll be a good boy. Anyway, uh, check me out. Check me out uh, in the next video. Catch the, the, the next uh, analysis and trade ideas. Do not forget to smash that like button if you liked uh, what you got out of me and want to encourage me to, you know, put out some more free analysis, free education, free, 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 free. Anyway, uh, uh, do, do leave some feedback if you benefited from this analysis. All right. I would love to hear from you. Okay. Anything, any comment, any request, got questions, hit me up. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for sharing a few moments with RT Money.